Good evening, miniature enthusiasts. Hi, Lord Tamberlane back with more obscurities in miniature. And we're systematically going through weirds the other side, specifically the Abyssinia faction or allegiance. And today we're going to look at the Electrocutioners, which sounds like an awesome 80s hair metal band, but in fact are high powered uh, dudes in heavy armor with big electromagnetic cannons, which is almost as cool as 80s hair metal, but. You know, whatever. So, what do we got in the box? Well, we have what looks like five unique sculpts, but only nine models. So, I'm going to guess we are in the privateer version of where you have one unit leader model and then copies of everybody else. I don't know who the unit leader is. Maybe this dude? Beats me. Or this guy, because he's posing heroically with a big old cannon. Interestingly enough, it looks like everybody actually has a different weapon. That's kind of unique. But, funny enough, they all have very plain and generic rules as far as I know when things are falling everywhere. Alright. In case you're not familiar with Weird's new Other Side game, it is a mass battle game as opposed to Malifaux being at a skirmish level. And you have everybody fighting on these multi-based fire team bases, which are of various sizes and various shapes. This is a three-man squad, and since they're human size, they're all in 30 millimeters. Some of these are five-man squads, which obviously would be a lot bigger. Nope, these guys fight in groups of three. But that's just because they're so awesome, and there's bases everywhere in front of me now. Now they have the card with the stats, and when you flip it over, this is their gloried side, which is after, I don't know, fulfilling whatever objectives they get powered up. I'll let the actual wargaming type people worry about that, because we want to see the toys inside. Right? I want to see them. So, after having handled and painted and based and fiddled around with enough of these figures, I feel fairly confident that saying despite how shiny and plasticky and rubbery this may look in person, they're not that bad when you've actually got them painted up. And I think of all the factions, the Abyssinian guys are probably my favorite in terms of just how they look. And I know my younger brother was... More than happy to take a few of them off of my hands. And naturally, we don't want to have anybody stand up on their own. One of the pluses for some people, a minus for others, would be the fact that all of these figures are pre-built rather than on plastic sprues that you have to glue together, which was Malifaux's bread and butter post 1.5 edition. They did start with metals originally, but it's been pretty much non-stop plastic since then. And they're one of the few plastic manufacturers uh, on the plus side, whoa, on the plus side, you know, if you're not a hobbyist, I guess, this is going to let you get into the game a heck of a lot quicker, and if you are a hobbyist, it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt having to deal with all of the gaps, you can see a bunch there, like between his legs and stuff like that, they're not the greatest gluing job, if you want to you know, disassemble them and take a shot at it, be my guest, I'm not going to. I've been trying to do quick and dirty paint jobs just to get everything finished up because that's just me. All right, did we already have this guy? I don't know, okay. Yeah, those two are the same. Okay, so there are the duplicates. And we looked at this guy with his little rivet electro gun thing. So then that means here is our third sculpt. And again, they almost look like Space Marines or, you know, Heresy Era or Thunder Warriors or something. Some kind of a Stardust progenitor, maybe. They're pretty high-tech looking, especially for what's supposed to be a Victorian-era game. I figure, worst case, if I can't sucker anybody else into actually playing the other side locally, I can always use these in a game of In Her Majesty's Name. And then here is the last sculpt. Of the duplicates, this is the guy with the claws with his thunderball fists, and I don't know how effective those are going to be in a fight. That's that's going to need some re reheating there. I do like the backpacks; very funky, very big, very bulky. And here is our last actual sculpt. So there were five sculpts, and then this, I guess, is our unit leader. He does have the biggest plumage. And since these guys, I was going to say they're based on birds. No, we do have a unit called the Crow Runners. But, uh, so yeah, here's our fans, fans, leader dude. Let's see how they stack up compared to some other miniatures, though, shall we? All right, so we have attempted to stand up a couple of our Abyssinian friends here, the Electrocutioners, just to get a sense of scale. Now, they're obviously not as stocky as traditional GW proportions, 
they are much more realistically posed. Our buddy here does not want to actually stand up correctly. There you see. So that's just one of the inherent problems with the material that they've been molded in with a little bit of glue, a little bit of heat. They're not going to be much of an issue. I did bring some of my other 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 side figures that we actually have painted just to get a sense of scale. So this is another Abyssinia figure that does not want to go into focus. There we go. So I've shown her off before, but again, this is the same kind of material, very rubbery. Um, I did do a very horrible job spraying her with a matte sealer. So, you know, take that glossiness for what it is. But the same kind of rubbery textures were on her as well as our plump friend with his weird gun there that I spent far too little time painting. So again, these two I wanted to point out specifically because when I was painting them, they were super glossy, super rubbery looking. They were the worst offenders of the bunch from when I put them together, just to give you guys a good sense of scale. Same thing with our South Wales borderer right there. So obviously there are other Abyssinia figure scales quite nicely. And if you wanted to mix them in with some regular Malifaux figures, I don't see that as being much of an issue if you're gonna get creative. Obviously they're wearing a lot heavier armor than our unarmored friends here. So that would count for some of the height advantage they've got. Their bases are also a little bit taller. Now, what could we use them for possibly? Well, as I said, they're obviously going to be used in the game The Other Side, which hopefully I can get around to finding a rulebook for. It has been very spotty in terms of, um, I can't think of the word, distribution. That's what I'm thinking. I haven't seen it in any of the local stores, but then again, Weird has not ever had a large presence at any of the stores that I tend to associate at. So take that for what it's worth, and I'm not the biggest uh, local game store shopper as it is. But they are out there. It's just going to take some work, I think, on more of our being the customer part than it is on Weird, unless they really are going to be pushing it at shows and conventions. But I don't see it having much of an online presence yet, sadly. Not as much as Malifaux has. Um, my hope and desire is to use them in more small-scale skirmish games because they're just interesting sculpts. And the fact that they're so varied, they're not as varied as some of the other factions for the other side in terms of the, how many poses you get in one box, but they are still pretty unique. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't think of outside of this faction how many other high-tech African nations I can think of that I can roll on the tabletop that just do, you know, their models justice. I think they're very respectful and very exciting to play with. So, um, again, they seem to be running between 20 something to 30 something dollars, which is, seems to be about the given price for most of the unit boxes that I have come across for the other side. You do end up with at least three fire teams of three guys each. I don't know how that's going to play out in terms of the actual game. But it does give you at least a bit of variety to mess around with. It's no worse than a squad of TAC Marines or something from GW, for instance. Of course, with GW stuff, you get all the options to customize them to your liking, whereas these are already in one piece. So that could be a hit or a miss for you, depending on what it is you're after exactly. Again, if you're after 19th century crazy, high-tech, African nation armored dudes, I mean, well, here you go. This is the faction for you. That said, um, keep your eyes peeled. I hope to try to get the game under my belt at some point in the future so I can actually talk about it. But I've been blabbering on enough, so I am going to bid you all a fond farewell. This is High Lord Timberling with Obscurities of Miniatures, and pew, 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 bye-bye.